Welcome back to my channel. This week's color rescue happened in Dallas when I was there for my two day expert color and design training. So the weekend before I met Matt and Casey, Matt had sent in photos of their bedroom. I love the way he applied with the color wheel next to his head. So awesome. And they wanted a bedroom makeover. It was their anniversary, the weekend that I happened to be there and their bedroom needed a refresh. Now, when I arrived, I then saw their living room, which I kind of live like your living room is the most important room in the house because that's the one we spend all our time in. Whereas it is true that the primary bedroom is the most neglected room in most homes because, you know, the people spend money on their living room and then their kids' rooms are a priority because that's where the kids are. And so if you can decorate your primary bedroom and make it a sanctuary, that is so good and should be a priority for sure. But it kind of turned into this epic thing because I could not resist adding some pillows, a carpet, some accessories. Their sofa and love seat needed a table and it desperately needed a lamp and all the things. So here it is, let's get started. Okay. So what we have assessed in this room is that the fabulous sofas are green gray. I'm going to check it out, but the, because the carpet appears to be more of a taupe and a pink beige, it's looking a little bit dirty next to the furniture because the undertones are just totally different. Okay. So the undertone of the sofas are green gray, right? You can see that it's not blue. It's not violet. It's not toad. So that's how we know that that's the one. And then if we come down to the carpet, the carpet is there. See, there is green gray in the carpet, but in actual fact, because there's so much taupe or pink, yeah, taupe. Yeah, it's taupe and green gray. Mm. But because the overall read is so taupe, it looks dirty next to the, because it kind of looks like we tried to match it and we failed. That's kind of how it looks. So we're gonna find a new rug. In the bedroom, we have a uh, pink beige linen, which is great because it works really well with the pink beige upholstered headboard. So that all works. If we're trying to match it, this is all working, right? And then the actual, um, the rug now is more blue gray. There's probably not enough pink beige in here to make it feel like it's really working really well. There is some pink beige in here, but because the overall read of the rug is blue gray, we would need blue gray on the bedding in order to make the rug work. So what we're going to do is we are going to head over to Home Goods. And that room today. Okay, so we're going to go with this rug in the bedroom because it's got some nice blues in it, picks up the rich cognac tones of their ottoman, and it has a little bit of pink beige, just enough to make it work. And now we need to find some bedding. I'm gonna put the other stuff on there. Get a good collage going. Get a good collage. Oh, we're at our fourth store today, or fifth? Fourth. Fourth. Who knows? Okay, and we have almost given up on the rug for the living room, so we were kind of sad about the situation. All that's out there is blue rugs, right? And so, now I just found that this uh, pillow that is blue and white and sage green, and this is the color we're trying to introduce, and these are fabulous, big, good size, like, designer looking pillows that look amazing on those pottery barn style sofas they have. Where'd you get so those sofas? Crate oh, Crate Barrel. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And so that's what they, and they, they certainly look like that as well. So, um, you know, now we're discussing whether we have the energy to do this still. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? We got it. We got it. All the time in the world. I'm saying we go back to the other one, get the mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. you go get the rug and you can return whatever doesn't work. If you hate it all, you can return it all. Oh, we know. <laughs> sure are. Just here for now, and see if we find anything cool. We'll hang it later, but what we can hang out are the
nothing on that wall. I love it. Yeah, you know what? I would like to see something cool, like a sculptural, on that mantle as well, though. So, we will do that. Just look at that. That's so good. traveling yeah, oh, shopping, yeah. right? You gotta take stuff with you into the store so that it all starts to come together and match. And we're kind of doing the color balancing method here that I teach. You know, cause when, like it's baby steps, right? When you add color, you don't have to, like most people look at these colorful rooms and they think, first of all, they think that's unachievable and unattainable. And then they think like, I don't know how to do that. So I couldn't live with that. That's what people say. But all you really need is neutrals plus one color. And look at how amazing the room looks. <laughs> <laughs> walked into the house, the first thing I noticed was one of the most beautiful timeless kitchens I've ever seen. Just gorgeous. I love the light fixtures. All the details were really managed well and it just looks amazing with the rest of the house. So I started following Maria back when I was considering what type of windows to put in, whether we were going to put in black windows or white windows. And then I heard some advice or I saw some advice on her blog specifically stating how the black windows look better when they're uncovered, lit from the inside, without any drapes or, or curtains. So that really, I hadn't seen that advice anywhere else, so I started looking and going through her blog, and all of a sudden found a whole bunch of information that was really helpful when we started doing our renovation. I had been watching Maria on YouTube, but a few weeks prior to her email letting us know that she would be in Dallas, I did an e-design for some pea gravel for my new garden that I was installing. So when I got this email that Maria was coming to Dallas and looking for people to do a color rescue, I knew that we needed it because we had our bedroom and our living room that needed help. Well, I think right away we noticed um, Maria and Anita's personalities and in Maria's own words, she was bossy in a charming way, immediately telling us that our dining room chairs had to go because they did not fit in with the rest of our house. Now, technically the chairs belonged in a mid-century modern style living room, but right now in all fairness, I think a lot of people have made this mistake in their dining rooms because the mid-century modern trend is really big. So when you're actually looking for furniture, you see a lot of pencil leg furniture, which doesn't belong in this kind of a traditional setting. But I think we made it work with the styling in the end. After all, those chairs, I didn't sit in them, but they looked pretty comfortable to me and they can seat an entire big party. I'm sure Matt and Casey's home is the entertainment home. So I was really happy to just help pull that dining room together with some lamps. Like that's what it desperately needed. It also needed drapes. So we could either repeat the charcoal of the chairs or to create some flow from the living room. After we added green, I suggested adding some green drapery in the dining room on both these windows. So that's the reason why we've got that piece of art that looks a bit lonely because it won't once there are panels on both sides of 
the window. And then later, after we left the next couple days, the lampshades for that dining room fixture arrived from Amazon and they sent us a picture of how it looked because wow, amazing. Now you no longer have lights that hit you in the eyeballs and you have the atmosphere of like eight little lamps, which is always the best. Maria seems in person just like she seems online. There's a lot of energy, a lot of craziness and it kind of fits in with who we are as people too. Lots of joking and laughing. So it was really great to, to feel a sense of connection. So the timing of this actually happened to coincide with our wedding anniversary. Today happens to be our 23rd anniversary. And so expanding the project and spending a little more than we originally anticipated, we'll just chalk it up to our anniversary gift to ourselves. Now this color rescue turned into this epic one and a half days. So we didn't get to focus as much attention on one room like we normally would because I couldn't resist, you know, doing the living room and then the dining room as well. So I just want to point out that when we first came home with lamps for the bedroom, they were too small. So then we exchanged them for ones that were taller and bigger in scale. So notice that most people actually will buy just the small little, hey, I'm at Walmart. There they are. Let me just get those little lamps that I need for my bedroom. But really lights need to be an average of about 35 inches high. So it seems big, but it's so much better than just the tiny little 15 inch lamp that you might have sitting there now. I know, I've seen thousands of bedrooms and they're always little tiny lamps. So get some bigger ones. Cause even if you never turn them on, they're decor just sitting there by themselves. Anyway, I love the little vignette we created, the cute little curvy lamp we found from Target, super fun and I hope you enjoyed this color rescue and are inspired to take that one color, add it to your gray living room, bring it to life for the holidays. And if you live in the lower mainland or the Fraser Valley, somewhere close to me, we will also be in Calgary and Edmonton at some point, but I'm not sure when, but in the meantime, send in your photos. I would love to help you with a one day makeover for your living room. So I'll post the links below on where to send in your photos and how to apply and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.